Hare Krishna devotees, please accept my humble obeisances. All glories to Rupa. Uh, today in this chapter, we are going to hear how um, the Puranis Atharvaveda was disseminated with, among several disciples. And also we are going to hear about uh, how Puranas themselves were disseminated. And also the most bigger topic in this chapter is uh, the topics that are described in the Puranas. Are the 10 characteristics of a Puranas, like Mahapuranas, like that. Those are described, which are also described in second canto, 10th chapter, first verse also. Same topics uh, described with a different uh, terminology here. Yeah. I don't see Swapna Kanki Padimati on the call. Yeah, she was not responding, Prabhuji. Okay. I can read, okay. Prabhuji. Oh, sure. Okay. Thank you. Om Namo Bhagavate Vasudevaya. Om Namo Bhagavate Vasudevaya. Om Namo Bhagavate Vasudevaya. Narayanam Namaskrityam Naram Chaiva Narutamam Devim Saraswatim Vyasim Tatojayam Udhirayet Natsta Prayeshu Abhadreshu Nityam Bhagavata Sevaya Bhagavate Uttama Shloke Bhaktir Bhavati Nainstik Hare Krishna to all dear devotees, please accept my humble obeisances. Today we are reading from Srimad Bhagavatam Chanto 12, uh, Chapter 7, Text 1 to 24. Just opening question. Text one. Sutta Goswami said, Sumantu Rishi, the, uh, the authority on the Artava Veda taught his Samhita to his disciple Kabhanda, who, who in turn spoke it to the Patya and Veda Dharasa. Text two. Sukhi Yani, Brahma Bhali, Mo Dosa and Paipa Lani were the disciples of Veda Dharasa. Hear from me, hear, hear from me also the names of the disciple of Patya, my dear Brahmana. They are Kumuda, Sunuka and Jajali, all of whom knew the Atharva Veda very well. Text 3. Bab Haru and Saindhavanya, disciples of Sunaka, studied the two divisions of their spiritual master, completion of the Atharva Veda. Saindhavanya's disciple Savarna and the disciples of other great sages also studied the edition of Atharva Veda. Text 4. Nakshatra Kalpa, Santhi Kalpa, Kashyapa, Angirasa and others were also among the Acharyas of the Atharva Veda. Now, O sage, listen, as I name the authorities on the Puranic literatures. Thara, Tharaya, Runi, Kashyapa, Sarvani, Atharvarna, Vishwa, Rayana and Harika are the six masters of the Puranas. Text six. Each of them studied one of the six anthologies of the Puranas from my father, Roma Rishin, who was the disciple of Sri Vyasadeva. I became the disciple of these six authorities and thoroughly learned all the uh, presentations of the Puranic wisdom. Text seven. Roma Harshana, a disciple of Veda Vyasa divided the Puranas into four basic complexion and the sage Kashyapa and I with Savarni and Akratavarna and the disciple of Rama learned these four divisions. So, Sunata, please hear the attention of the characteristics of the Purana, which have been defined by the most eminent learned Brahmanas in the accordance with the Vedic literatures. Text 9, 10. O Brahmana, authorities on the matters understand a Purana to contain 10 characteristic topics, the creation of this universe, the subsequent creations of the world and the beginnings, the maintenance of all the living beings, their substance, the rule of the various Manus, the dynasties of the great kings, the activities of such kings, inhalations, motivations, and the supreme shelter. 
other scholars state that the great Puranas deal with these 10 topics, while the lesser Puranas may deal with five text level from the aggregation of the uh, original modes within the unmanifest material nature and Mahatattva arise from the Mahatattva comes the elements false ego which divides into three aspects. This three folds false ego further manifest as the substance from the forms of prescriptions has the sense has the cross sense objects the generations of all this is called the creation textual the secondary creation which exists by the mercy of the lord is the manifest in uh, in of the desires of the living entities just as a seed produce additional seed activities that promote the material desires into the performer produce the moving and the non-moving life forms text 13 the return means the process of the substance by which the moving uh, moving beings uh, live upon the non-moving. For a human, Brita specifically means acting for one's livelihood in the manner suited to his personal nature. Such action may be carried out either in the pursuit of the selfish desire or in the accordance with the law of the God. Text 14. In each age, the infallible Lord appears in this world among the animals, human beings, sages, and demigods. By his activities in these incarnations, he protects the universe and kills the enemies of the Vedic culture. Text 15. In each re region of Manu, six types of uh, personalities appear, appear as manifestations of Lord Hari. The ruling Manu, the chief demigods, the sons of Manu, Indra, the great sages, and the Partial incarnations of the Supreme Personality of Godhead. Text 16. Dynasties are the lines of the kings originated with the Lord Brahma and extended continuously through past, present and future. The accounts of such dynasties, especially of their most prominent members, uh, constitute the subject of the dynasty history. Text 17. There are four types of cosmic inhal inhalations. Occasional elements, continuous and ultimate, all of these are affected by the inherent potency of the Supreme Lord. Learned scholars have designated this topic dissolution. Text 18. Out of ignorance, the living being performs material activities and thereby become in one sense the cause of the creation, maintenance and destructions of the universe. Some authorities call the living beings the supreme, uh, be, living beings the personality undealing the material creation while others say he is unmanifestation unmanifested self text 19 the supreme absolute truth is a present throughout all the stages of the awareness waking consciousness sleep and deep sleep throughout all the phenomena manifested by the illusionary energy and within the functions of all the living entities and he also exit uh, separate form or su separate from all these. Thus situated in this own transcendence, he is the ultimate and unique shelter. Text 28. Although a material objects may assume various forms and names, its essential ingredient is always present as a basic of his existence. Similarly, both conjointly and separately, the supreme absolute truth is always present with the created material body throughout its phase of existence, beginning with the conception and ending with the death. Text 21, either automatically or because of one's regulated spiritual practice, one's mind may stop functioning on the material platform of waking consciousness, sleep and deep sleep. Then one understands the supreme soul and withdraws from the material endeavors. Text 22, sages expert in Ancient histories have declared that the Puranas, according to their various characteristics, can be divided into 18 major Puranas and 18 secondary Puranas. Text 23 and 24. The 18 major Puranas are the Brahma, Padma, Vishnu, Shiva, Linga, Garuda, Narada, Bhagavata, Angi, Skandha, Bhavishya, Brahma, Viratha. Markandeya, Vamana, Varaha, Matsya, Kurma, and Brahmanda Puranas. Text 25. 
I have thoroughly described to you, O Brahmana, the expansions of the branches of the Vedas by the great uh, sages Vyasadeva, by the great sage Vyasadeva, his disciple and the disciples of his disciples, one who listened to his narration will increase in the spiritual strength. Thus ends the Bhaktivedanta Purport, uh, Chapter 12, Chapter 7, the Puranic Literatures. Thank you, Prabhuji Hare Krishna. Yeah, thank you so much, Madhya. Just one minute. So, so we are hearing the context here was um, that uh, Sutta Goswami and Sages of Namisharanya was speaking and then Sages of Namisharanya asked a question a couple of chapters ago actually that how the Srimad Bhagavatam Purana came about, how the Vyasadeva and his disciples uh, disseminated all the Vedic scriptures. That was the question that started. In the previous chapter, uh, how the Rig Veda, Sama Veda and uh, Ajur Veda, how they are disseminated among one disciple, one guru to disciple and the guru to disciple like that, how it came in a parampara was described nicely. Now, in this chapter, uh, two main themes are coming, like I have described. One, one is that how Adharva Veda is disseminated uh, from Guru Param, in Guru Parampara like that. And then uh, description comes about what are the Puranas, what are the 10 characteristics of Puranas, uh, what are the major Puranas, major 18 Puranas like that, the description goes. So we'll go to the first topic, uh, which is the, how Atharva Veda was disseminated like that. In the topic text one, uh, Sudha Goswami is describing that Sumantha Rishi, Sumantu, Sumantu Rishi was the authority of the Atharva Veda, it seems. So he taught his disciple Kadamba, who in turn taught it to Patya and Veda Darsha, two other disciples. So in the purport for the next verse, it makes it clear that among these two, Veda Darsha divided again the other Veda into four parts and gave it to his disciples, it seems. And the other disciple, Patya, divided into three parts, it seems. Like that, it is disseminated to other disciples like that. That's where the third and fourth were also uh, going on. Third also goes like that. Only three verses are allocated to indicate how other Veda was disseminated. Now the topic switches here. Uh, he says in the fourth verse, middle of the fourth verse, O Sage, listen as they name the authorities on Puri, Puranic literature. Now he's giving the, who are the authorities of the Puranic literature now? Who is giving this? Sudha Goswami. In the text 5, he says, the six masters of Puranas. Who are they? Kashyapa, Savarni, Akrita Vrana, Vaisampayana, and Harita. Like that. Those are the six masters of the Puranic systems. Six authorities. And then, uh, text 6, Sudha Goswami describes, actually, these six masters all learned from Roma, my father, Roma Arshana Sutta. And who learned from Vyasdeva. So that's how he's establishing how these six masters are also coming in disciple succession. Vyasadeva, Roma Arshana Sutta, and then these six masters of Puranas. And from those six masters of Purana, he describes this Sutta Goswami is speaking, learned from them, he says. Not directly from his father, but from these masters who learned from his father like that. And going to text 7, uh, he describes that uh, his father Romarshana divided the uh, Puranas into four basic compilation systems. And then he gave it to his disciples like that. And then now he says, which is the topic. So first he described it with Atharvaveda dissemination. He described the masters of Puranas and how he learned the Puranas from the six masters who learned from his father like that. Now he switches to another topic, which is, uh, he says, Please hear with attention the characteristics of a Purana, which have been defined by the most eminent learned Brahmanas in accordance with Vedic literature. So again, he is not making up something. He is quoting what previous Acharyas already described. Like that is saying, these 10 characteristics of Purana are already described like that. And if you remember, uh, in the second canto, last chapter, 10th chapter, 
first verse also describes this. That's quoted in this uh, coming up verse also, purport also. And some terminology is different, um, but essentially, Burjan to reconcile them to say this is part of that, this is part of that, like that also. But essentially, 10 characteristics are there in Puranas like that. Now, this verse, 9th and 10th verse, talks about the 10 characteristics. The way it talks about is creation, primary creation is one topic, subsequent creation or secondary creation of world and beings is second topic. Like that, it gives other topics, maintenance of all living beings, their sustenance, rule of various manus, dynasties of great kings, activities of such kings, annihilation, motivation, and the supreme shelter. These are the topics it describes. And then, now this verse also states one another important point that uh, is elaborated in the later verse also. That there is something called Mahapuranas. Mahapuranas contain all the ten topics in full. Whereas there are lesser Puranas, they are not called Mahapuranas. They have only five topics. What is there in the five? We'll hear also. I think in one of these purports is clear. What is there? What are the five topics in a smaller Purana like that? Where is Mahapurana? Bhagavatam is a Mahapurana. We'll find out there also in the coming verses. And then this purport also quotes the uh, common verse we know how ten topics of Srimad Bhagavatam are described. Sri Sukhavacha, Atra Sargo, Visargascha, Sanam, Poshanam Utaya, Manmantaresha, Anukata, Nirodho, Mukti Rasreha. That's the common verse we know about ten topics of Srimad Bhagavatam. But this verse is talking generally about all Puranas like that. And then, actually, yeah, so actually that comment, Jeeva Goswami also confirms it seems that the Mahapuranas like Srimad Bhattam will deal with 10 topics, whereas the lesser Puranas deal with only 5 like that. Uh, then, what are those 5 uh, Puranas that deal only with five characteristics that is described in the purport here. Uh, actually, the, that is quoting Jeev Goswami's reference. It says, creation, secondary creation, dynasties of kings, reigns of the Manus, and the activities of various dynasties. Interestingly, not the key topics of who is the supreme shelter, a mukti, liberation, those topics are not there in the lesser Puranas. So, he's saying, yeah, and these Puranas, which can cover only five topics, they're called secondary Puranic literature in Sims, whereas the ones that cover ten topics are called Mahapuranas or primary Puranas like that. Now, Jeev Goswami explains something interesting in the purport. Uh, it's quoted, important for us to understand. He's describing the tenth principal topics of Bhavatam are found in each of the twelve cantos. It's not that one one topic is pinned to one uh, canto only like that. That's a misunderstanding, he's saying, number one. Number two, uh, it's not that they're all appearing in sequences in Srimad Bhavatam. That's the other point he makes. So overall he makes uh, the point that these 10 characteristics, 10 topics, are there in each canto with different degrees of emphasis and analysis like that. So we should not artificial think that this canto is this, this canto is this, like that. Of course, devotees talk about that also by giving this caveat, but still say the major emphasis in this canto is this, like that. For example, canto 5, major emphasis is Tana, like position of planets, like that is described. But Jeeva Goswami says that is only uh, uh, to understand there is emphasis, but all the topics are there, each of the, each of the cantos like that. Okay, now going to the next verse, text 11. So this, so now in these last two verses, 9 and 10, Sutta Goswami described the 10 characteristics or 10 topics of the Puranas now. Now he's going to describe what does each mean like that. That's where, that's where he's going. Text 11, he starts to describe what is the Sarga or the primary creation. We know primary creation is what the Mahavishnu does, which meaning... Uh, he creates the ingredient elements, material elements that are required for the secondary creation by Lord Brahma like that. That is the essence of the topic. Of course, the verse itself gives some detail, like how from Pradhana, Mahatattva comes, um, then from Mahatattva, false ego comes, and then false ego uh, further manifests a subtle senses of senses, uh, sense objects, 
like that some detail it gives which we already discussed in second canto and third canto like that. essentially the principle is that the basic ingredients for creation of the universe is coming from supreme lord that is the main point we need to learn and that is called sarga or creation now textual describes the second topic which is the uh, secondary creation are also called as visarga yeah. here also is the same term used in the here also in this context and basically this secondary creation is what lord brahma does using the ingredients that supplied by lord already using the blueprints supplied by the lord already so he's just making it happen he's executing on it like that commonly yeah that's i think that's good enough yeah. and then here gurujan prabhu writes in his commentary in his study guide that we hear about uti our creative impetus that means what impels a human being to do positive actions or negative actions like here in kispu we were celebrating nasam chaturdasi yesterday here in kispu had the negative impetus to destroy things and to go against vishnu like that whereas pradhan maharaj has a positive impetus to go towards vishnu to worship supreme lord like that so that is also uh, included in this topic according to this categorization uh, in this canto like that gurujan prabhu describes meaning the 10 topics are described here and 10 topics described in second canto he is aligning them both so that we don't see oh what is that where is that where is that we don't get confused like that but point is secondary creation here uh, which is visarga that is creation done by lord brahma now text 13 describes another topic called vritti or the process of sustenance interestingly the way it is described here it describes vritti means by which the moving beings uh, live upon the non moving that means for humans vritti specifically means acting for one's livelihood in a manner suited to his personal nature according to my personal nature how i act uh, to earn my livelihood that is what is being described here so then that can be done by two in two ways is described here one is either i have some selfish desires so i am pursuing that for with that motivation i lack second is i lack according to the laws of god that is a, of course practicing devotees were meant to act according to the principles of religion like that even bishma dev talks about it in first canto also so then uh, burjan prabhu describes this topic vritti or process of sustenance given here is the same as sthanam described in shrimad bhagavatam second canto sthanam means position of the position or different planetary systems like that is described there so why is planetary systems described there whereas here is talking about human being earning his livelihood for example we explains because for humans the sustenance is earth is a main form of sustenance earth gives us food and everything like that um, so that's why the planetary systems are described in the second canto section like that he mentions now text 14 goes to another topic of the purana which is raksha or protection of the supreme lord here supreme lord protects the universe and kills the enemies of vedic culture it is in the second canto the term used is called poshana for the same protection here is the term used is raksha like that and uh, this one of the this one of, you notice this this raksha protection topic was not there in smaller puranas it is one of the important uh, topic for mahapuranas including Sri Udbhautam, Raksha protection. Like uh, one common example Burjan Prabhu gives about Raksha is the Ajamila past time in the sixth canto of Sri Udbhautam, where Ajamila was protected by Vishnu Dutas like that. Now the next topic described in text 15 is called Antarani. Antarani is the same as Manvantara described in the, uh, that um, second canto uh, verse. Basically, here this verse is talking about in each reign of Manu, there are six types of personalities who appear as manifestations of Lord Hari. We remember uh, our uh, Vedic time is cyclical, right? Satya Yuga, Treta Yuga, Dvapar Yuga, Kali Yuga, like that, four of them. We know Kali Yuga itself is 432,000 years long. But these four Yugas put together, that times that Kali Yuga times 10, that is 4.3 million, 4.32 million years like that. That's called one Divya Yuga. So now thousand of these Divya Yugas make up one day of Brahma we learned. So that's called a Kalpa, one day of Brahma. And in that Kalpa, 
we hear how there are 14 manus who are leading the mankind. And then 14 manus, if you divide that uh, 1000 yuga cycles uh, by 14, it comes to 17 divya yugas like that, 71 divya yugas like that. So that's what is being described. Bhujan Prabhu describes as analysis, that's why I'm sharing. So the 71 times 4.32 million years, that much time each Manu is ruling. For that time the Manu is ruling, there are six kinds of personalities who are expansions of Supreme Lord that, that are coming here it seems. Who are they? We discuss this topic in detail, I believe in the beginning of 6th canto if I remember correctly. Somewhere in 6th canto, this topic was described in detail. So the, what is that? The six type of personalities, first is Manu, who is the ruling personality. Like for first Manvantara is Swayambhu Manu like that. And then the chief demigods. Notice the demigods are changing with Manvantara. Next is the sons of Manu, Manuputra it's called. And then Indra. So Indra is also post to remember. So each Manvantara they are changing. And then the great sages. So great sages are also changing with each Manvantara. That's another important aspect to note. The partial incarnations of the Supreme Personality of Godhead also. That is the sixth personality like that. So now text 16, after describing Manvantara topic are also called Antarani. Text 16 talks about, um, what is this topic? Yeah, Vamsha, our dynasty, and then uh, histories of the dynasty, Vamsha and Charitam. These two are the topics described here in this particular verse, text 16. And then uh, Burijan Prabhu describes, these are taking the place of Ishan Kada. That is described in the second canto. What is Ishan Kada defined there? Ishan Kada is described as incarnations of Supreme Lord along with his activities and also the activities of the devotees of the Supreme Lord like that. That's how the, it was described there. Now here, these two topics are the dynasties of the kings. That means kings coming from Lord Brahma and down, down, down. down. That is the dynasties like that who is the son of whom, who is the son of the whom, like that we heard in ninth canto, majority of the section is like that. And then, uh, he's also saying dynastic history. That means some of the prominent kings in that line, what did they do? We heard of Dhruva, Dhruva Charitra, Dhru Maharaj, Prithu Maharaj, uh, Rishabdev, Bharat Maharaj, like that, right? Some prominent kings. So that's also Vamshanu Charitam, or a dynastic history like that. Those two topics here. Now going to text 17, uh, text 17 talks about what is the topic? Samstha, the dissolution, it seems. This is the same as in the second canto. Uh, the topic is called annihilation or viroda, going back to Godhead, like that is described. Winding up of cosmic manifestation. Now, this is describing the four types of cosmic annihilation, which we already read in the previous chapters occasional, elemental, continuous, and ultimate. Um, they're all coming because of the inherent potency of the Supreme Lord, like that is described. This is called dissolution topic or samsta. Now going to text 18, this covering the topic about hetu uh, or the cause. In the second canto verse, it's called as mukti or liberation like that. Here is described, out of ignorance, we living beings perform material activities and thereby become, in one sense, the cause of creation, maintenance, and relation. Actually, Supreme Lord is the cause of all creation, maintenance, and dissolution or destruction like of the universe. But why are we being called as a cause here? Because Supreme Lord is doing based on our desires only. That's why he's doing. Why is he creating material creation? We heard that in extension in second and third cantos. Two primary reasons. One is giving us, giving us a chance to exploit the material nature because that's what we wanted to do. So, number one. Second is to give us the opportunity to reform and become self-realized also. To, to get purified and become self-realized and go back to the spiritual world. Or to, or to get situated in the pure devotion service of Krishna. So that's what is being described. Purport clarifies that point also. That uh, the Supreme Lord is maintaining according in response to the desires of conditioned souls. Mm. Yeah, I think that's the main point there. And text 19 describes the uh, last topic, which is Ashraya. Uh, the, in second canto, it used to be called as Ashraya, the shelter, supreme shelter, which is primarily elaborated so much in 10th canto. So here, the word is used, Apashraya. 
Apashtam is the unique shelter, it seems. Uh, so basically, point is that supreme absolute truth, Krishna, is the basis of everything. Is present throughout the stages of awareness, whether it is waking consciousness, sleeping or deep sleep, throughout all phenomena of the Maya and within the functions of all the jivas, and he also not only is existing in all these things here in the universe, but he is also existing separately from these also. So, Supreme so Lord is existing through his energies everywhere and is existing separately also. Such person, uh, such uh, ultimate absolute truth is the absolute shelter, supreme shelter like that. This is talking about. That is the tenth topic of the Srimad Bhautam or all the Mahapuranas like that. Now going to the 20th verse. Now after giving the uh, unique shelter as a last topic, he gives an example how Krishna is the unique sh uh, shelter like that. The example here is described as uh, which we already discussed in the previous chapters. The, the example of a clay. Like clay, using clay or the soil, we can make different kinds of pots. We can make a uh, clay glass, clay pot, clay vessel, like that we can make different different items. But the essential ingredient is clay. That is one point being made. That means all of them, whether it is glass form or bowl form or whatever form it is, pot form, all of them have clay as the essential ingredient. That is one point. Second point is even though some soil is made into these forms, there is soil also, clay here also. That means clay existing separately also. So, like Supreme Lord is existing separately and then Supreme Lord is existing through his energies and different things also in the universe like that. So, that is the analogy being given here to understand how Supreme Lord is the ultimate shelter or unique shelter for everything like that. Now, going to 21st verse, uh, Sutta Goswami, in essence, is doing the conclusion of the Vedas. What is the conclusion of the Vedas? To focus our full consciousness on the Supreme Lord. That is the main focus of the Vedas. That's what he is describing in this way. In this verse, this purport has something interesting. Uh, he says, Bhakti dissolves the subtle body of the living entity without separate endeavor. Like how in the fire in the stomach will digest all that we eat. Similarly, by performing Bhakti, our subtle body, uh, which has all the desires, uh, like bad qualities of uh, greed, false pride, and it gets dissolved. And said, including the false ego, like that is described, Bhakti lives. And then it elevates us to pure consciousness, Krishna consciousness, like that. The 22nd verse describes, uh, yeah, now here is directly verse is saying, Sutta Gosam is saying, the Puranas can be divided into 18 major Puranas and 18 secondary Puranas. So, major Puranas, secondary Puranas are the two words used. I use the primary Puranas, but I think major Puranas is the right word used here. Mahapuranas is a word in Sanskrit. Though all the Mahapuranas are described by names here. And Srimad Bhautam is inside that. And in the purport, Jiva Gosam is quoted to indicate that same thing is mentioned not only in Srimad Bhautam here, but also Varaha Purana, Shiva Purana and Matsya Purana also. That makes it authentic because some people have doubts. Oh, only Srimad Bhautam is telling like that. That's why Acharyas are giving the commentary like that. So, aging major Puranas are here. Brahma Purana, Padma Purana, Vishnu Purana, Shiva Purana, Linga Purana, Garuda Purana, Narada Purana, Bhagavad Purana, Agni Purana, Skanda Purana, Bhavishya Purana, Brahma Vaivart Purana, Markandeya Purana, Vamara Purana, Varaha Purana, Matsya, Kurma and Brahma and Purana. So, it seems. so the last verse for today, it says the expansion of the branches of Vedas. So I explained everything about how the Vedas were disseminated by Vyasadeva and his disciples. One who listens to this narration will increase in spiritual strength, he says. That's how he concludes. From Burjan Prabhu's book, I wanted to read a couple of things. One is, he's quoting from Tattva Sandarbha commentary by Gopi Paranand and Prabhu, where he describes the 18 Mahapuranas actually are categorized into for people in mode of goodness, for people in mode of passion, mode of ignorance. So he gives that list here. So I thought I will share with you. He says, what are the Puranas in mode of goodness? He says, Vishnu Purana, Narada Purana, Bhagavata Purana, that is our Srimad Bhautam, Garuda Purana, Padma Purana, and Varaha Purana. These are the Puranas in mode of goodness, he says. And then for Puranas in mode of passion, he says, Brahmanda Purana, Brahma Vaivarta Purana, Markandeya, Bhavishya, Vamana, and Brahma Puranas. 
and then pranas in the mode of ignorance tamoguna is matsya kurma linga shiva skanda and agni puranas like that he describes and then he also indicates how simut bottom has a supreme position according to jiva goswami so in bottom is even beyond the mode of goodness also number one so in bottom is non different from krishna like we heard in the first canto third chapter itself and then um, bhagavatam is a natural commentary on the vedanta sutra that way it has a unique position and it can take us fallen souls from our current position to uh, shelter of krishna like that so we can pause there Srimad Bhattam ki jai, Sri Lukha Padhi ki jai. Let's offer obeisance to all the devotees of the Lord. Vancha Kalpataru Beshya Kapasindu Bevecha Padita Nam Pavani Bhyo Vaishnavi Bhyo Namo Namaha. Thank you so much devotees. Hare Krishna.